Welcome back to Butchering Sports Talk. Uh, this is Jorge here with uh, Mr. Fang. Mr. Fang, the legend himself. So now we're talking about UFC 212 uh, coming up right this Sunday. You know, it came up quite soon. Saturday. Saturday. Saturday night. My apologies. So the big fight we're looking at, uh, big man himself, Jose Aldo, looking to defend his title. That's the big main event match. So let me explain. So there's, there's a lot of history between this fight. Basically, Conor McGregor screwed up the whole title defense scheme with the featherweight division, which is 145 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of choosing to defend his title like normal, Conor McGregor chose to uh, explore other options, like like Nate Diaz, which means once he's not defending his title, he vacated the title spot and fell back to Jose Aldo. Exactly. But Jose Aldo also took a break for some reason or another. So they had to make something happen, and this is where Max Holloway comes in. Max Holloway won the interim featherweight fight, so this is like the unification fight between the interim featherweight belt and the supposed real featherweight belt. So heading into this, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of hype online about it. A lot of people are looking forward to seeing really which way does it does this match turn out. What ends up being your prediction for how the, the title bout is going to shake out? So. Jose Aldo, I would say, is the fight fan's favorite. Okay. Um, he hasn't really been doing too much uh, these past two years uh, between getting knocked out in 15 seconds by Conor McGregor. He did fight um, Frankie Edgar, okay. and uh, uh, it was a pretty good fight. Uh, he kind of dominated Frankie Edgar uh, for five rounds and got a position one. And Aldo is just known for, like, He's super tough, uh, has crazy good leg kicks. Uh, Max Holloway, on the other hand, he's basically the up-and-comer, right? He's the he's the new kid on the block trying to break out. And in my opinion, he's already proven that he's a champion. Mm-hmm. But to a lot of fight fans, um, they don't think he's got the resume yet. Even though he's been undefeated for the past, I don't know, five, six, seven fights. Um, so... Jose Aldo has experience. Max Holloway, he's basically got the speed and the striking. Uh, it's gonna see. It's gonna be. I I am rooting for Max Holloway because I think his style is very fun. He's very fast. He moves around. He's uh, striking. But Jose Aldo has like he's got pedigree. He's got you know he's got experience. Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Jose Aldo on this one. I agree with many of the points that you have said on there. But uh, especially when it comes to a lot of these uh, big time fights, uh, just having there's something to having that edge of knowing that you, your reputation precedes you being such a tough customer that the usual what for most people are the usual knockout punches, the usual takedowns, and all that uh, that's not necessarily going to work with someone with the pedigree and the experience that that Jose Aldo brings to the table. So as much as there is a chance that Max Holloway could seize the spotlight this time around. I have a feeling that Jose Aldo is going to tell him, young man, not just you know, just wait, wait wait a couple more times and then you might get your shot. Um, speaking of the rest of the card, is there any match in particular in the uh, in the undercard that might strike your interest or anyone who's interested in watching? Sure. So, UFC 212, it's, um, I would say it's about an average card. So it's not the best, most stacked card, but it's not terrible either. Mm-hmm. So besides the uh, featherweight championship fight, there's two other fights to look out for. Uh, the women's strawweight division, which is uh, 115 pounds, between Claudia uh, Gidea and Carolina K. I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce her last name, but she's Polish. <laughs> uh, basically, this is the number one contender fight. Okay. Uh, Joanna Jacek is a champion. She beat both of these girls. And she's basically Joanna. It seems looks untouchable, right? Yeah. And what else are you gonna do? Um, you gotta the contenders gotta fight to see who basically gets the rematch. Mm-hmm. Claudia already had two chances versus uh, Joanna, but she has moved to Albuquerque, in New Mexico, mm-hmm. to train with Jackson Wink. Okay. And um, she's been training her stamina. Basically, she, she's a different fighter than the first two times she's faced Joanna. When, and this is a fight that uh, where she gets to showcase her new skills and her new conditioning regimen. 
So by focusing on this new trading regimen, is it possible that she might be looking just a little too far and thinking already of her rematch and not giving her current opponent enough credit? I think so. Actually, that's a good point. Um, Claudia has gone on, on record saying that uh, Carolina has the bad technique. And I think she really, okay. she really believes that. Uh, Carolina is a fighter who just has so much heart. She, she doesn't go down, right? In her mm -hmm. fight versus Joanna, she gets punched and kicked over and over again for 25 minutes. And she does not go down. So, I don't know. Maybe, like, you know, if, if she's... If, Carolina stays up, doesn't get knocked out, doesn't get submitted. You know, maybe she can uh, do enough damage to Claudia. But I, I do agree. I think Claudia might be underestimating Carolina a little bit. So final prediction, do you think the new technique, uh, it, it gives, an, gives Claudia enough of an edge to put her over the top? Is, I, is, is it mu as, as much of a guarantee as she says? As it so is? I think it's, I believe it's three rounds or five minutes. Mm -hmm. I would say it's going to be a unanimous decision for Claudia. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to get knocked out or submitted uh, or you know, get a TKO. Mm -hmm. I think um, Claudia has the aggressive style that would land more points basically on the judges' scoring cards. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you on that one. Uh, the thing, the thing about Carolina, and, and she really does kind of represent that whole Rocky Balboa vibe of like you know, you show enough heart, you show enough fight, a lot of people will come to admire that, and you know they'll show you all kinds of respect for it. But ultimately, that's not really going to get you that many points in the scorecard, which when you're not able to knock someone out, when you're not able to make them tap out, that's what's going to be the end result. And it's, it's going to be tough for her to, to get through this opponent. So it, it might look, at least in my eyes, that for Claudia, it might just be that this rematch with the champ might just be a guarantee. Yep. So we'll see. Yep. And the uh, third fight I was referring to is sort of a retirement fight. This is, I believe, this is the last fight for Retort Belfort's uh, UFC contract. Mm -hmm. He's going up against Nate Mar uh, Margarge? Margarge? Not, sure how, not, right, yeah. not quite sure how to say his last name. Both of these guys have been fighting for a long time. Uh, Retort, he's kind of controversial. Basically, he has been, like, like four years ago or so, he's He's, he's really good, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then basically, news came out he was on TRT, which is like testosterone replacement therapy. Yep. Um, since since then, he hasn't been doing so good. Since then, he's been kind of sucking. But Vitor is a legend in the sport. He basically like helped UFC grow with his you know really good fights in the past. Yeah. Um, and he's been losing, and basically he wants to go out with a win. Uh, Nate is similar. Nate has been fighting for a long time. In the past, he's been uh, Tyron Woodley, uh, the current welterweight champion. Mm -hmm. um, and he, basically, he's been really good, good people before. And he's, he, he's made Tyron look really bad. He just dominated Tyron. Yeah. Um, but again, now the same, same, same boat as Vitor. He's not doing so well. Uh, both these old guys aren't doing so well. But this is Vitor's last fight. He wants to get a win before Tyron. So in these in the round for glory, who who gets it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, I I would say I would give the edge to Nate. I think Vitor just looks he just looks so bad in the last few fights. Like he doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the power. It just he just gets beat up. I think I got to give it to Nate. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's, it's been very unfortunate because you look at uh, basically any any kind of makings of USC or any type of top whatever UFC fights in its history, Vitor's name, it just comes up consistently among just one of those names that just put up great matches that made it exciting. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be tough for that to translate into a, uh, a victory against Nate on, on Saturday night. At least that's the way I look at it. Uh, as much as it'd be very, very good to see him end his career, so to speak, on a win, uh, if he has his challenges cut out for him. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough one. But either way, folks, it looks to be a great card Saturday night, uh, UFC 212. Uh, this has been Butchering Sports Talk. For Fang, I'm Jorge. Have a good night, guys. See you next time.